Hi, I'm Krasm, and this is a Bosch WTVC 5330 US-09. So it was manufactured about 10 years ago. Uh, it's a uh, 500 series dryer. Uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to remove these screws, take off the back panel, and clean this out. Uh, because when I purchased this, the light on front that says lit filter was illuminated. What usually causes that is there is a thermal couple down here that gets dirty and reads differently than the thermal couple up in front. Uh, if you don't clean those, uh, it'll toss that air and it won't actually dry your clothes. So, first thing to do is actually get a T20 uh, Torx bit and take off all these screws, two from the top and then around 17 from the, the back. I've actually already taken off uh, this T20 screws and replaced them with Phillips. Mostly because when I bought this, it was missing almost all of the uh, screws. Uh, actually, it was missing 10 of the screws. So I replaced them with a M7 uh, 0.5 pitch uh, screw that I had in my uh, board. Or screws I had in my board. And uh, you don't have to actually remove all the screws, but you do have to remove this screw, this screw, this screw. Uh, you want to take off the junction block and the screws for the junction block. Uh, that way you can remove the outlet. Obviously don't do this while it's still plugged in. Well, it's not plugged in because it's right against my garage. There's two screws up here, and then the lid comes off the top. There's two screws up here. I take those off last, that way the back doesn't fall off. Almost all of these are actually just going in an empty space. So if you have to replace the screws with a bigger screw, you shouldn't actually hurt anything. I have to remove this screw, but since I'm going to be taking off that tube, I'm going to remove it right now. You only actually have to remove the screws that are holding on the back panel because there's a few that are uh, holding the drum. Yeah, that's wallered out. So these are actually metric machine screws. Uh, they just drill out a hole and then they tap it. So, if you replace them with cheap metal screws, obviously it's not going to be metric anymore. Let's do the bought this at a hardware store, it's used, um, but, oh, the two screws on top, which I forgot to remove. Keeps the panel from falling on you. Also keeps you from removing the panel. <coughs> so this tube, uh, clean it out about once a year, otherwise you get a ton of dirt in here. This is the thermal couple I was talking about. There's a connector right here that you could use a, a 
uh, you want to clean it off and use either Q-tip with the rubbing alcohol or acetone to clean out the corrosion. Then you put it back together. If this doesn't fix it, there's actually another temperature sensor up in front at the lint trap, which you can see. Eh, you might not be able to see, but it goes up in front. Uh, you'll have to actually take off the front in order to get to that. And uh, that's assuming you have to replace either this temperature, sens uh, temperature sensor or that temperature sensor. This is also what you do to uh, remove your uh, heater box. You have to remove these two T20 screws. Uh, you also uh, can clean this belt right here uh, to get even more dirt out of this. That way when you are finished uh, with your tearing this down, it's almost as clean as new. Where's my teeth? Oh, there it is. Lower that. And what you'll want to do is uh, blow all this dust out of your heater. You'll remove the female spade connectors. You can do it with your fingers. It's actually easier to use a pair of pliers, but I just gotta remove my fingers. This comes out. And if your dryer doesn't work, you could use uh, reset this switch. Otherwise, you can run a voltmeter in the ohm setting across this and it reads open loop or OL then these uh, nickel cadmium wires have actually shorted out. You can also see if there's like really if this changes color it usually is because it got so hot that it melted the wire. You can also see black spots on the wire occasionally when they go out. With this back off it's another good idea to open the front lint trap, take out your lint uh, screen and blow the crud from your lint trap out from that hole in the back. So we're gonna do that real fast. so that uh, you can clean out all the dust and maybe pet hair if you have pets from this belt right here. So is where some of the thermal couples go to. So if you would like, you can check up here, make certain that the contacts are nice and shiny. Otherwise, you'll want to use either a dental pick or some type of pick and clean them with maybe an emery cloth and pull off all these, clean all these contacts because these are also uh, run from here all the way up to that control board. And then there's also over here. I don't have to do that because once I actually cleaned that out and cleaned out my uh, 
front lip trap. I no longer had the lip filter light hair, so now let's put it back together. Put it back together. This king element is going to go. There's two ears right here. They're going to slide right here. Make certain that they fall in place. There we go. I'm going to put back the two T20s I have. The only T20s I have for the back. It's also a good idea to use uh, gloves since this is all sheet metal. It also, is, for me, I've cut myself on this numerous times. But I never learn my lesson. And I always do this without gloves. So, take some advice from me and wear gloves when you're doing this. Leather gloves, not neoprene or latex gloves. So that's back on. Re-add these two wires to the limit switch right here. Push this back into the temperature or thermal couple connector. Add these two wires, which are part of this uh, heating element. Make sure your ground wire is firmly connected. Wipe this out if you really want to get froggy. I don't really particularly feel like that. I need that to be done. If you do need to replace the belt, you'll take off these two ears, uh, route the belt over the top through here, take this off, route the belt underneath here, and then you'll uh, route it around this pulley right here, which pulls with a uh, spring, and then this uh, motor right here. So that's done. Let's put this tube back in place. Switch from T20 to Phillips. You won't have to switch because you'll probably have all T20s. I just got froggy and replaced the missing screws with uh, Phillips screws. There's that. Those are on. Yep. Put your two screws back on top. screws are the ones that you want to put the top on because the back screws are the ones that the panel screws into. Actually it doesn't matter because they screw right here. So front or back, either one. I'm going to add the biggest screws that I know of right here because I know that's where this one went. Sheet metal screws are the back five. screws and bigger screws. You have a uh, probably good uh, couple inches of clearance for this and then for the outside edge you have feet if you want to replace it with feet of bolts. It wouldn't be smart but you could do it. So these five bolts are the ones that you really have to worry about interfering with anything and they shouldn't. mistake, you want to put the screw for the pipe on the bottom one, and not the top one, because the top one is held on by all the rest of the screws for the outer cover. Always have to be at 
at least one mistake, right? So if you do this, say, on a deck or somewhere where these screws can fall, you want to put down a tarp or a sheet or something so you don't have to go looking for them. I got lucky last time I did this, but I wouldn't do that again because I've dropped so many screws this time. Now one thing about using Phillips screws is you're more likely to strip them, so don't go overboard. It would be best if you used a screwdriver with a clutch, but I live a little dangerously. That's my center. My neutral, I should say. back together. Should be good enough. Thanks for spending about 20 minutes with me and uh, hopefully this helps. Have a good day.